With another year passed, another round of sporting games is released from EA Sports. And with that, this year's entry for the pinnacle of racing is released to the masses with F124. With that comment, I don't mean the pinnacle of racing games, I mean the pinnacle of motorsports racing in general. And while I was watching and waiting for this game to be released, it had me wondering, what will be the main differences between F123 and F124? With that thought in mind, it was time to dive back in and re-familiarize myself with the offerings from F123. From the main menu aspect, we can see here that F123 has the return of Breaking Point Story Campaign, which follows the F1 career of Aiden Jackson, which honestly has been one of my favorite modes to play through since it was introduced in F121. Career Mode, which gives you the experience of moving through the F1 season using your own character in an existing F1 team, or alternatively, you can make your own F1 team and join the season as an owner driver. In addition to this, you can also experience the two-player career aspect, which allows you and a friend to drive for the same or opposing teams through an F1 season, which is something my brother and I regularly do. F1 World. Now in F1 World, you are able to customize damn near everything and also shows your F1 car status when you compete online. When you enter play, you will get the ability to play online in competitive and ranked multiplayer events, set up and take part in an exhibition Grand Prix and time trials. In the customization option, you can select your avatar appearance, country and race number, along with selecting the race suit and helmet design and customize the color scheme to your liking. Select what street or casual wear your driver avatar will have access to. Apply a livery to your F1 car and customize the colors to your liking and select what sponsors will be visible, if any, on your car. Create and customize your team badge alongside your living space because yes, that's exactly what we the fans want in an F1 racing game. The ability to create a living space for our avatar. And if I'm being honest here, the customization is pretty weak. In all previous F1 games, customization is limited to color choice. I can't create my own livery like I can in Forza or Gran Turismo, which looks okay on the car and fair enough because of the unique shape of the car and I am perfectly fine with set designs which I can change the color. But helmets, this is where I would have really liked to see some more power in the player's hands to create some of those amazingly beautiful custom lids that we see from real F1 seasonal drivers as opposed to set designs where we can just change the colors. Trophies, which you will collect as you win races. Isn't a trophy case supposed to have trophies? Uh, they were all wiped out in the big trophy fire. Ah, I see the trophies are still out for cleaning, eh, Lisa? <laughs> <laughs> cars which you can purchase. F-123 allows you to collect supercars, which really have no impact or importance to the game at all. Then from the main menu, you have access to the local multiplayer, which allows you to play LAN or a split screen game. League racing, if you have access or are looking to set up an F1 league race, which allows you to compete with other enthusiasts, but offers a lot more additional benefits through the EA RaceNet app, allowing you to review your lap times, giving you race analytics so that you can compare yourself against others in the league. League racing also allows you the benefit of a quick glance at seeing race results and leaderboard standings. The store allows you to spend Bitcoin in exchange for new helmet, car, and clothing designs with sponsor, victory voiceovers, and podium poses for your avatar. And the theater allows you to review and relive those race replays and highlights, which you may have saved as you play through the game. And now, at the end of May... It came! It finally came! <laughs> the release of F124. And right away from the menu screen, we can see a bit of a difference. It's not just a static image. EA and Codemasters are taking the time to show off their character models of actual drivers, which I have to say, are pretty on point for the most part. I say for the most part because there is always room for improvement when trying to emulate or digitally copy an actual human. Having said that, the offering from F124 remains largely unchanged with some items being left off the table in comparison to the previous entry. We can see that there is no continuation for the Breaking Point series. 
We do still have the career option, which gives you the opportunity to play as yourself or an existing driver in the 2024 season. You can opt to enter your own driver owner team or dive into an existing F1 team with the option to play through a season of Formula 2 before stepping into Formula 1. An options return with co-op career where you can race with a friend. However, now there is the additional feature of the secret meeting where other teams will want to meet with you and your friend within a season to see if you would like to engage in talks in changing in which team you are aligned to within the future. F1 World is back with the same offerings as last year's entry. However, I am pleased to see that the team have done away with the utterly pointless, uninteresting and useless customization of your living space within the game. The garage in F1 World will still show you the attributes of your F1 World car and how you can apply it grades to it. In the showroom, I was happy again to see the removal of the supercar category, which again had no real purpose in the game at all. And what you're left with is the player cars for F124 and F224 cars, which really, what else do you actually need to see? The customization, however, is also unchanged from previous years, and I'm actually disappointed at the offering. With the removal of customizing your living space and having supercars, surely a bit more time and effort could have been tipped into this aspect of the game at a bare minimum to give the player a bit more freedom to create some custom helmets for your co-op careers and online participation events. I would also add the customization of the player badge has a lot less of an offering than in previous years as well, which I can't help but feel a bit targeted. As of now, I can't make my normal VG logo like I had in previous years. League Racing, theater and store offers are still available. However, at this early stage in the store, nothing is worth spending my Bitcoin on at the moment. So here is hoping that we get more to choose from as the game runs through its life cycle. And while we have gone through and seeing the menu offering comparisons from F123 to F124, let's get down to brass tacks, shall we? How does it play? F124 sees a slightly upgraded user display, doing away with the dots for the rev limiter and using triangles. And I dare say because Fanatec is a partner of F1, and this is to mirror the Fanatec Formula Wheel series. It's also evident that the accelerator and brake displays have changed significantly from F123 as well, where in F123 we had these big, obvious horizontal bars on the left and right of the display indicating the accelerator and brake input pressure. This is done away with in F124 to angled vertical displays sitting on the outside of the gear indicator. Now, I could sit here and tell you about the graphical improvements of the game, but you can see this for yourselves when I compare the two games and the refinement that has gone in. And this is what you would come to expect from a newer entry into the series. Where the game really shines is its handling improvements. EA and Codemasters have redone the suspension models in the game, and I can really notice the difference. Just for clarity, I am playing F123 and F124 using the following equipment. A Fanatec Direct Drive Pro 8Nm wheelbase, the McLaren GT3 version 2 wheel, and CSL Elite pedals with load cell. It's important to note here that I am driving around with no ABS or traction control, with the racing line and manual transmission with selected gears. And from F123 to F124, the car feels a lot more stable, running into some of those tight corners where I normally find myself a lot more hazard prone. The levels of grip I can now feel from the car in F124 make me feel a lot more confident coming into those corners, and I really have instantly found myself able to push myself in and around the corners with a lot more confidence. What I've also noticed as well is that F124 is far superior in terms of feedback translating through my wheel setup. The tension from driving the car on the edge of grip capabilities of the tires is made a lot more obvious through the feeling of friction and tension as I turn through the corners, which if you saw one of my previous videos on how to drive without assist, F124 is fantastic at translating this properly. I also decided I would see how this translates on a more entry level setup using my son's Logitech G923 and to my surprise it was leaps and bounds ahead of F123 in terms of sensation and feedback coming through the equipment. Braking feels a lot more forgiving in this game and I have found that while yes I still lock up here and there, the sensation of braking is a lot more controllable and the game is giving me a lot more cues in terms of how I can ensure I don't totally lose control of the car while I'm playing through the game with sound, visual and feedback sensations through my wheel. Which means overall I'm feeling a lot more confident and able to push myself harder 
which is resulting, for me at least, in faster lap times, but there are still some learning curves for me to get better with. Personally, I still find myself struggling with launching the car without assist. However, I do feel like the traction in this year's release is a lot more readable to the player, and I'm doing a slightly better job at getting this right. However, if you have any advice for me, feel free to mention this in the comments down below. There is an addition taking place within the race in terms of mini games which are played during the game. In addition to the normal pit stop mini game where you have to get the timing right to limit your time in the pits, the starting grid mini game after the formation lap, this year's Formula 1 game introduced the race objectives, like meeting a lap time for the team or pushing to reduce the fuel load of the car, which I personally thought was kind of cool. Getting orders from the team mid-race for a sponsor requirements adds a new level of immersion to your F1 experience. After the race is over, you get the standard offering of your avatar saying the voice line. But what I thought was a nice little add-in, if you're driving as an actual F1 driver, you get an actual voice line of the driver. Then add in your podium walk and presentation ceremony which you would normally get in every other previous entry in the game. Now, what blew me away was the new driver ratings, which depending on how you perform during the race, affect how you as a driver are rated. You'll be judged on experience, racecraft, awareness, pace, and focus. And if you mess up, you will also lose points in these fields, which in turn will lower your level making you less desirable to other teams, especially when you get into a career where secret meetings are involved. The better you are, the more top teams will come knocking at your door. So F124 as a whole has done away with some of the useless things F123 introduced, which makes me happy, but still has missed the opportunity to put customization into the player's hands. The new and revised HUD I feel could be a bit plainer and easier to see with driver inputs like brake and accelerator input pressures. However, the overall handling improvements made to the game, thanks to the revised suspension modeling into the into F124, instantly make me feel a lot more confident without assist and means I can push harder through corners, which gives me an overall great experience in racing both in single player and online. But this has been just what I have noticed between the two games and what my experiences are so far, but I intend to put a lot more track time into this game and to see what else it has to offer. Did you pick up F124? And if so, what did you think? Let me know in the comments down below. Until then, I'll see you next time.